So our study looks at the first 100 patients that have presented to Mayo Clinic looking for help with long COVID symptoms or what we call post-COVID syndrome. And this is a condition that continues to surprise us. We have two main surprising findings in our research study. First involves the symptoms that patients are experiencing. As we expected, many patients complained of fatigue and shortness of breath. But what was really surprising were how many patients complained of troubles with things like headaches. In fact, 59% of our patients had some form of neurological symptom. On top of that, 45% of patients had troubles with things like memory and multitasking and word finding. This is often referred to as brain fog uh, in the medium. Hello, my name is Greg Vinish Kishorn, and I am an occupational and aerospace medicine physician with the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. I also am the medical director for our COVID activity rehabilitation program, otherwise known as CARP, and it's Mayo's first clinic to serve patients who are suffering from long haul COVID or what we call post COVID syndrome. We've recently released a study titled Post COVID 19 Syndrome. Description of a multidisciplinary clinic at the Mayo Clinic and characteristics of the initial patient cohort. This study, looking at the first 100 patients, will be published in the Mayo Clinic Proceedings July issue. Patients who are experiencing long COVID symptoms, of all the things that they go through, it's typically the brain fog that causes them the most distress. Another unique finding of our patient population is how many patients are suffering from some form of mental stress, things like anxiety and depression. And this is actually quite common. 25% of our patients, uh, roughly 25%, were experiencing these kinds of symptoms at their time of presentation. And there's a lot of reasons for this. One, it could be the effect of the COVID-19 syndrome on the brain itself. But in addition to that, patients who are presenting with this condition often have things like poor sleep and poor appetite. Their normal recreational activities are not available to them. And many patients are offer, also suffering from troubles at work. And all of this comes into play. Many patients are really hesitant to reveal these kinds of symptoms when they are looking for care for post-COVID syndrome. But it's important for patients out there to know that this is quite common and the mind and body do work together and both need to be addressed as part of treatment for this condition. Another interesting finding from our study is the type of people that come down with post-COVID syndrome. There has been some thought that this is a condition that affects mainly those patients who have had a very severe course of acute illness, like those who are in the hospital or in the ICU. However, only 25% of our patients were actually in the hospital. The majority of the patients that we have seen here so far have been able to have their conditions treated at home or just by going to their primary care provider. Another unique finding of our patient population is that 68% were female. Now, we're not quite sure what to make of this. We do have a couple of possible hypotheses. It could just be that more females present to the Mayo Clinic for care or this could represent an actual biological difference or a socioeconomic difference. But either way, this is something that we will need to look at more as we go forward with research. One area that we really wanted to focus on in our research is understanding how this condition affected a person's life. There's been a lot of great research out there looking at the kinds of symptoms that people are experiencing, but there hasn't been a lot of good research translating that into real world effects. And what we have found is, is quite staggering. Almost 35% of patients reported difficulties performing some of the most basic activities of life, things just like brushing their teeth or taking a shower. Over 80% of patients had difficulties doing their normal routines like driving or household chores and also getting back to work. 60% of our patients had been able to get back to work in some form, but only half of those were back to their normal jobs. A third of patients were not able to get back to work at all. And this is quite alarming when we remember that the average time to presentation for our patients is about three months. 
So patients are having a lot of difficulty with their ability to work from post-COVID syndrome for several months. And this highlights that this is a condition that just does not affect healthcare in patients, but also is an issue that's going to be affecting our economy and our society as we go forward. There's a lot left to be uncovered about this condition, and this is one of the first steps. There is a lot more funding and research emphasis on post-COVID syndrome and other similar conditions like chronic fatigue syndrome and fibromyalgia. A question that I often get asked is, are patients going to get better from this condition? And we do see that patients get better. Only a few handful of patients are still experiencing symptoms one year after their infection. And this is just the beginning of our understanding of this condition. As we learn more about this condition, I do think that patients will get better faster and maybe we'll even find a cure for this condition that will get patients that quick fix that many of us are looking for. So patients out there, if you're suffering from this, I do want them to remain optimistic about the future of this condition and hang in there. We're all working here for you. If you want to learn more about our study, we invite you to please review our article that again will be published in the Mayo Clinic Proceedings in the July issue. One of the key ways to getting a foothold on this condition is education for both patients and providers. And we hope that this is a first step in the right direction. We hope you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you'll find access to information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.